My wife out on the beach. Now you're talking about a beach babe. Had her hat on, had her dress <laughs> halfway down to her ankles out there. You know, people looked at her like she was a dinosaur. <laughs> Amen. All right, Isaiah chapter number two this morning. Good to be in God's house. No right here, I'm excited about being in church. Amen. Ah, I don't ever want to get over it. I don't ever want to get over it. I thank God. Listen, I got saved in church. I got S-A-V-E-D in church. I got born again in church. I got a new life in church. My wife got a new husband in church. Amen. Hey, hey, thank God for church. We live in a general forsaking. Yes, ma'am. 1962. 1942. Amen. Isn't that a blessing? Yes. I got saved that day. Got saved that day. Never been the same. Never been the same. An old man picked these children up and took them to church. Isn't that something? Got saved. Amen. All right. Isaiah chapter number two this morning. Hey, Memorial Day uh, tomorrow. A day set aside to honor the memory of America's war dead. Boy, a lot of people have forgotten. May we never forget those who died or were wounded in the fight for freedom and liberty. May we never forget those who served our nation and continue to do so today. You know, war has always been a way of life. War is a good thing. War has a lot of collateral damage and a lot of bad things. War, war is necessity. Uh, don't you listen to these people. We don't want any more war. No, you don't want a world without it. Ecclesiastes said there's a time to kill and there's a time of war. There are times when it's either war or it's slavery. If it had not been for our soldiers in World War II, you'd been speaking German on one side of this nation and Japanese on the other. They already had plans to take America and split America up. I thank God, war or slavery, it's kill or be killed. It's been estimated in the last 5,900 plus years. All right, you say, how is this earth? Would you listen to these idiots out here? Oh, 92 million years ago, there was a glacier here. Yeah, they were here 92 million years ago, and they went ice skating on it. This earth is 6,000 years old. That's it, folks. He gave the analogy, six days God worked. Six millenniums. A day is a thousand years. A thousand years of the day. The seventh is the millennium. The kingdom. Thank God. In these years, there have been an estimated 14,600 wars. Less than 300 years in the earth's history. Now these are historians that go back as far as recorded and what took. Less than 300 of 6,000 years did they have peace with no war. War is a way of life. The hearts of people worldwide long for peace. They've talked about peace for centuries. They have experienced precious little of it. Amen. Now, we got peace here in the United States today, but it's breaking down. Talking about Memorial Day. Memorial Day, our nation will once again honor our war dead with the placement of flowers at the tomb of the unknown soldier. Our nation's freedom... has come at a great price. I thought about the dead. People nowadays stake, take these things for granted, all right? They've, right? they've had to pay no price for where they are. People that day don't even go in the military. I think one of the worst things they ever did was stop the draft. The military is good to take boys and make men out of boys. Give them responsibility. Give them some... I, I thank God I... My life was regimented when I went into the military. 
Uh, my mama didn't let you lay in bed all day. You didn't sit in the house and play on a cell phone. We didn't have them. You didn't sit in the house and watch a TV set. We didn't have that either. They called the people of World War II the greatest generation. Those that paid an ultimate price have always been the greatest generation in their times. Be it Korea, Vietnam, Desert Storm, Iraq, Afghanistan, still dying today. I looked up some statistics in all American wars, either by our country or within our country, over 41,892,128 men and women have served in times of war. Approximately 1,190,085 died. 1,430,290 wounded in action. I'm not about to bring you to where you are. Tremendous number of young lives who gave their uh, lives up in their future so we could live and have freedom and privilege and joy, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Coming to America is a privilege this morning. It's not a right. It's a privilege. I'm talking about America this morning. Come right or stay where you are. This Memorial Day, we need to remember the blood also of those in the Bible and in history who shed their blood that we could have the Word of God and have the faith of our fathers this morning. I, I thought about them a little. From the blood of righteous Abel, the blood of the prophets who would not bow their need to bail, to the blood of the Son of God who died on the cross for the sin of the world, to the apostles and New Testament saints who gave their lives for Christ's namesake. Read Hebrews chapter 11. To the saints throughout the church age, as from apostolic time, as from 100 A.D. until the present. An estimated 50 to 100 million people died because of their faith. Over 50 million in the dark ages alone as they took Christians and burned them at stakes. Roman Catholic Church did that. She will be the whore of the book of Revelation and she will be heavily involved in the persecution in the end times. To the Christians of our day, a young couple the other day got killed. I don't know if anybody saw that in their early 20s. Got murdered in Haiti. The missionaries, just a young couple sold out to God. Another individual died with them there. There were three of them that they lost their life. Gangs just uh, rode in and gangs took them and killed them. And boy, what a shame. Christians are being persecuted today worldwide as the hatred for Christ and His children along with Israel continues. If you've never read a book, Read one, Fox's Book of Martyrs. Also, the trail of blood. As they show you what it brought for you and I to have what we've got this morning. Listen, a great price has been paid for our nation. A great price has been paid for what we have today. It doesn't end there. The tribulation saints will be martyred. Revelation chapter 6, verse 9, you see the souls under the altar. Say, how long, Lord? And he said... You will be there until the rest are martyred. This morning it's our turn. As I read this this morning, I, I want to show you, I'll read it in just... We who love God and the Son of God and the Savior and the precious Word of God that we hold in our hands and try to live a life pleasing to the Lord through separation from the world are now hated because of who we are where we stand this memorial day we need to remember those that have gone on before those that are dying now and those that will continue to die I want to quote Ronald Reagan just for a moment and then I'm going to get in to the message it won't be that long 
Ronald Reagan said, freedom is never more than one generation from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Or one day we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in the United States where men were free. I have often made the statement, our children will never know the America that we grew up in. War and peace, two-sided coin, a revolving door. Neither side being open permanently. War creates peace and peace unfortunately creates war. We live in days of weakness, but God taught David to war. Psalms 144 verse 1, Blessed be the Lord my strength which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. God taught Israel to war in the book of Judges. We find we must teach our children to war. You young couples, we're going to have to fight for what we've got. You need to understand that. You may not give your life, but in a sense, you will always have to give your life. Because that's what war requires. Now look at Isaiah this morning. Isaiah's very interesting prophecy. It's the largest of the prophecies. There are 66 books in the book of Isaiah. There have been a lot of false doctrine about Isaiah. You have uh, some people teach Deutero, Deutero Isaiah, that Isaiah was actually written by two men and, and not just by one. They fail to rightly divide the word of truth. Isaiah's 66 books are chapters. We have 66 books in our Bible. What you have with Isaiah is a Bible in miniature. The reason they teach what's called Deutero-Isaiah is because of the division within the book. The first 39 chapters and the last 27 are the same and yet they are different. There's a division. Why? You've got 39 books of the Old Testament and 39 books of Isaiah teach that, the Old Testament. The other 27 books line up with the New Testament. You've got 27 books in the New Testament. So what you have is a miniature Bible in your hand this morning. Oh, what a blessing. Now, that comes into play in chapter 2. I want to tie it to the message this morning. Just going to read four verses. Verse number 1, The word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. What we have here is a prophecy. A prophecy of a, 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 a tribe from which Christ came in Jerusalem. Look at verse 2. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. What's he talking about? He's talking about Mount, Mount Zion. I thank God for Benjamin Netanyahu who is a Zionist. That's why they hate him. It thrilled him when our president years ago made Jerusalem where our uh, uh, people would be, all right? And, and they made that the capital again instead of Tel Aviv. They moved it back to where it needed to be. He's talking about Mount Zion here. He said, It be established in the top of the mountains, it shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. Now, We've got something in verse number 2 that ties us to a time to come. And all nations shall flow unto it. Look at verse 3. Many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways. Who's he talking about? He's talking about Christ in his millennial reign. We will walk in his paths, for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Now, I'm going to pull a text out of verse 4. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Now, there's a lot of things that tie us to this millennium, this golden age, where the wolf, shall lay down with the lamb. A lot of people say the lion lay down with the lamb. No, it's the wolf that lays down with the lamb. 
where a child can play on an adder's den, a poisonous snake, and no harm, and nothing's going to hurt in all my whole amount. We're talking about a time when God's going to do something different. Now, notice what he said. He said he'll teach us his way. We'll walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. We find the cessation of war. You say, tying it back to the Word of God. When you get to chapter number 2 here, he's tying you back to Genesis chapter number 2. Remember what I said? Each one of these correlates with the book of the Bible. What happened in Genesis chapter 2? God finished His work in righteousness. Get chapter 2 now. He's made Adam. He's made Eve and brought Eve unto Adam. Uh, God has pronounced that everything is very good. So he's taking you back to a time when everything was very good. When you get to the millennium, you're going to find a lot of things in the millennium are going to line up with the way they were in the beginning. Now eventually we'll get a new heaven and a new earth. You say, what's God going to do with this? And He's going to renovate it, son. You go to the book of Second Peter, God's going to renovate Hey, He said the elements. They knew the air had elements to it. Everything in our air is flammable. It burn. Oxygen burns. Nitrogen burns. That 1% of... of of uh, gases that are mixed in there with them all burn if you get them in the right percentages. God is going to use the elements that He placed in this earth to bring a fire that will renovate this earth. While we are at the white throne judgment of God, the heavens and the earth are going to flee away. There's not going to be a place found. You're going to find God renovating the heavens and the earth at the same time He judges the lost dead. That's why chapter 21 says, after the white throne judgment, and I saw a new heaven. <laughs> In a new earth. He's talking about putting this thing back. Listen, until God does something like this, we're going to have war. I thought about God's children today. Until then, we're going to have to fight a war with our national enemies. And by the way, sometime the enemy is from within. I believe there's a concentrated effort in our nation up here to destroy. Friend, it's there. I remember Nikita Khrushchev, 1958. I remember him. He took his shoe off and beat on the podium at the United Nations, which we need to throw off of our property. We need to give them 48 hours to get their junk out of here. We are a sovereign nation and they're not going to run it sitting up there. But at the same time, I remember when he said that they would take America without ever having to fire a shot. That's what they've done through infiltration. I found out years ago that liberals infiltrate but fundamentalists separate. You have an infiltration. You're going to have, hey, you young people are going to have to fight for your land. You get registered to vote. If you're old enough to vote, you get registered to vote. If you don't vote, you have no say so. Amen. I, I, I knew a man, every time I talked to him, he'd talk, all he wanted to do is talk politics, but he never voted. I said, You've got no dog in this fight. Amen. Huh? Hey, I'm talking about our enemies, our enemies of peace understand only one thing strength. Friend, let me tell you, you cannot negotiate peace from a position of weakness. That's where we are today. I'm not politicking. I'm just telling you the way it is. We got a bunch of sissies in Washington, D.C. that don't have any fight in them. I thank God for Benjamin Netanyahu. B.B. is a warrior. Thank God for that. Hey, I, I love Israel over there. You pray for 
uh, Dr. Benjamin Netanyahu, a highly educated man, educated up at Yale, highly educated man, an intelligent man, a Zionist. Thank God you pray he gets saved. Every day I pray for him and his wife Sarah. They need to be saved. They've heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. But we go back to here. Hey, we find that, that you've got to have strength. As long as sinful man's in control, wars are going to have to be fought. By the way, that's why you have a second amendment. You ever thought about the two amendments they fight? One is freedom of speech. The other one is your freedom to carry a weapon with you. I make no apology. I'm an armed preacher. Friend, we go out when I come to church and nobody going to walk through them doors. They'll have to walk over my dead body. Friend, when I take my wife out someplace, she is protected when I take her out someplace. Listen, I think I've got responsibility and obligation to do. Hey, taking up, they, they made that second amendment for a reason. One, you've got, you cannot control an armed nation. The second thing is, if it comes to it, they can overthrow the tyranny of their own government. That's why they're scared to death. They're scared to death of us because we are nationalists. Um, we believe in this nation. You're going to have to fight your enemies. I'll get back off of that one. Amen. Hey, I get, I get mad at that thing. I'm still ready to fight. I'm 76 years old, son. I can shoot as good as I ever shot in my life. And I'm too old to run. I'm too old to fight. I'm too slow to get out of the way. That makes me have to stand my ground. Hey, I'm talking about America. I love this place. If you didn't notice in my singing this morning, this man was born there. This is my country this morning. You're going to have to fight for it. Second thing, we're going to have to fight a war with their flesh. Uh -huh, now we're going to get into the good stuff, right? Hey, who's your worst enemy? You say, the devil's my worst enemy. No, you are your worst enemy. <laughs> I looked at him this morning. I shaved his face and brushed his teeth and pushed his hair back and did everything I could to be presentable enough not to run anybody off. Yesterday, if you'd seen me, my hair flying all over the place. <laughs> hey, you say, why? Hey, I looked like a porcupine when I was a boy. My hair just stuck up. I mean, I don't have a curly hair in there anywhere. Hey, I've got cow licks and don't even own cows. Ourself. One of these days, thank God we're going to get a new body. I like that, amen. Won't need this anymore. What I'm having to do is take all the teeth out. And we get both hairs at the same time. Hey, I'm talking about, hey, do you fight with your flesh? One of these days, there'll be war no more. <laughs> and we shall all be changed. We shall not all. Oh, boy, isn't that a blessing? Boy, I love 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. Amen. I love that. We may not all sleep, but we all... We'll be changed. That's what they put in a nursery on the wall one time. We made. Hey, I'm talking about. You're gonna to have to fight your body. You're gonna to have to fight your eyes. You young people, protect your eyes. You protect your ears. You be careful with this garbage that you're listening to. When mom and them don't know it, you got these little earbuds in. You be careful. Music has always been a devil. In the day that God made Lucifer, his tablets were a part of his makeup. He was a musical devil. Get a brand new body one of these days. Amen. Our Lord's going to deliver us from the body of this death that is coming. Amen. Hey, third thing this morning, you're going to have to fight a war with satanic foes on a spiritual plane. You know, the Bible said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. It goes on down. Talk about spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, we've got a lot of spiritually wicked people today that are Baptist. Got a lot of them. 
Just because somebody's independent Baptist don't make them fundamental. If you get kicked out of something else, you automatically become independent. Independent is independent. That means we are an autonomous church. We are self-supported. We take care of business from the Word of God regardless. I love these other churches around here. I pray for them. pray for these pastors that are trying to do a good job out here. But I want to tell you, their business is not my business. My business is right here in this place. We're going to have to fight spiritual foes. Hey, you get them all the time. They come in and try to change your doctrine. They come in and what they do, they'll root. I am a wolf hunter. Amen. How many of you like to hunt? Nobody hunts. Oh, come on, Danny. Yeah, come on. You gave up. Brother Oh, you like to hunt? Oh, man. Somebody asked me, he said, how do you shoot them pretty little deer? I said, well, first thing, I put my rifle up my shoulder. Ease that safety on. I put that little crosshairs right where I want them things. I breathe and let my breath halfway out and I begin to squeeze. <laughs> I love to hunt. Take bath. I was raised hunting. We were raised on rabbit, squirrel, man, we barbecue coon, fish, frog legs. We ate to squeal on pigs, the tongue out of a cow. We had pork brains and, and eggs. How many else had pork brains? That, oh, that was the thing back in the day, man. Pork brains and eggs. Hey, hey, one thing I ain't ever ate is chitlins. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> I'm going to put you in church discipline. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, hey, I may eat them fried, but I don't want to find no corn in them. Every time you eat a sausage, oh, you're eating chitlins. Hey, man, that's what they put them in and tie them off and put them in time. I, I'm just trying to help you. And you said Southern. Hey, I always wanted to go to Sally, South Carolina. They have a chitlin strut down there. How many know? Anybody been there? They said they take a chitlin this long, one get it in his mouth, the other one they just eat toward each other until they can kiss. I told Barbara I'm going to drive through one time several cans of corn, just slip corn in there while they're boiling. Hey, hey. I know that's funny. I saw a little thing one time, a cartoon. Pogo. Y'all remember, how many remember Pogo? Oh, Pogo got in a boat one day and he stood up and he had his big... You know, a big pole, they didn't have oars, and he said he was, everybody gathered out on the little beach there. He said he's going out to find out who the enemy was. Later, he come poling back, and they all gathered, and they said, you find out who the enemy is. He said, yes, sir. He said, it are us. We'll have to fight apostasy that slips in. We live in perilous times. The enemy's active within the church while the church is sleeping. He devours us while we devour each other. The Bible said that we're to withstand in the evil day and having all done all to stand. That word withstand means you've got to be able to take a punch. I tell these little old preachers coming up, friend, if you ain't got a backbone in you like a white oak log, you better stay out of the pulpit. Hey, I'm talking about God's people. We've got to fight for what we've got, folks. We've got to fight a war for the faith this morning. You ever notice how salvation is changing in the Bible Belt? Hey, ask people, hey, Go to church anywhere? Yes, I go. I say, are you saved? They say, yeah, I'm saved. I said, tell me how you got saved. I'm talking about Baptist people. You know what the number one answer is, how they got saved? They'll say, well, I was baptized when I was 12 or 13. And I always say, baptism has nothing to do with salvation. They say, oh, I know that. No, they just told you where their faith is. Somebody asked me if I'm saved. I'm not going to tell them I got baptized. I'm going to tell them I got born 
into the family of God on a Sunday night by repentance and faith. Hallelujah! Hey, we're going to have to fight for the old paths. Everybody now they're entertaining these churches. We are not here to entertain. We're here to worship. You want entertaining? Oh man, I'll bring you one of them guitar pickers from Hollywood that he, he can say Jesus. Hey, Amen. We're not here to do that. We're not entertainers. They're stealing all of our young people. You know why? Because they like entertainment mixed with everything else. And we don't entertain. You say, preacher, why don't you entertain? That's not my intent. I'm not mad at anybody this morning. My intent is to preach the Word of God. That's the only thing I find they did in the church was sing praises to God and they taught the Word of God. They preached the Word of God. That's what church is. Somebody said if a song, the beat gets to your feet before it gets to your heart, you better back up and look at it. Battle for the doctrines of faith. Friend, let me tell you, I, ha I know what I believe and I know how I believe it and I can take you to the Bible. I don't argue and debate with people, but friend, I'll tell you what, what I believe I can back up with King James Bible. The doctrines of faith. Battle for the Word of God. Boy, that goes out saying. I said this morning, Sunday school, people say, why are you so tough on the Word of God? When they quit attacking the Word of God, then I'll shut up. These liberals want you to shut up about your Bible while they continue to attack it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that big of a sissy. I want you so solid on a King James Bible that no power on this earth can shake you from it. You need to be in Sunday school next Sunday morning. I'm going to take a verse and I may just spend 45 minutes on that part of a verse I stopped this morning short battle for the word of God why in the world are we battling over what the word of God is? do you know no confusion ever came in until Westcott Hort showed up greatest revivals in the history of the new church friend were off of a King James Bible which was ill for 270 years there was nothing but a King James Bible last 130 years now they've introduced a myriad of everything out here friend and it's confusion and God is not the author of it hey until he comes we are commanded to contend for the faith once delivered talking about fighting I'm an easygoing guy. Everybody knows. Any, am I not a teddy bear? Yes. I, 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 I try to get along with everybody. I really do. But I'm also about as hard-headed as a man can be when it comes to spiritual things. Listen, we're going to have to fight our national enemies you better speak up. You say, well, I'm, we're part of the silent majority. That's what the problem is. When they get their little old things out there, we are Hamas. They need about 100,000 people that love America to just throw them in the off of the bridge into the water is what they need. They'll arrest you. They won't arrest them. They'll keep you in there nine months to a year before you ever get to court. They'll release them the next day. You're going to have to fight for your nation. Then you're going to have to fight that body you've got. That dirty, stinking, rotten human nature that you've got. You're going to have to fight your ears, your eyes. You even be careful what you smell of. Then we're going to have to fight for the faith. I'm an old-fashioned, fundamental, independent, Bible-believing Baptist preacher with absolutely no apologies. I don't apologize. Amen. 
I'm not going to argue in public. You sit down with me. If you've got a problem with the doctrine, I'll show you in the Word of God what I believe. Why I believe. Hey, you know, it's refreshing to me when people say, Preacher, what do you believe? I want them to know. I stopped one guy one day. I knew he didn't like what was preached. They came in with about 18 kids, filled up two pews back there. Boy, said, man, I got a family coming in. But I noticed he was, you know, just kind of sitting. His wife was looking at him. He's shaking her head. No, don't say nothing. You know, I got back there and shook heads when we that. We we had an evangelist with us that day and he was back there with me and they came out I shook hands and said boy glad to have you with us today boy and I said if, if there's anything you need to know or want to ask us about who we are you feel free to do that I want you to know who, who we are and he said don't need to know anything I said well we're King James only he said I gathered that Later, that evangelist came up to me and said, uh, about that family that came out, he said, you believe they'll be back? I said, no. Hey, man, no. You say, why? Because I explained it right. Hey, Amen. You're going to have to fight for your faith. One day there'll be war no more. But until that time, folks, we need some people that'll not bend, not bow, and not kiss the feet of Baal. I often wondered when old Elijah was up on Mount Carnal and boy, he said, oh Lord, they killed all the prophets and now they're after me. And the Lord said, I've reserved unto myself. And I thought, where were they? <laughs> when he was up there doing all that, amen. But there's still some good people out here. And it's going to take good people to hold a good nation together. Amen. Let's stand a little long this morning. That's all right. Honoring our war dead, both spiritual and physical. I thank God this morning for those that gave their life, not that they died, but because they lived. When World War II started, my dad and all of his brothers at one time went down and joined up. One lost both legs, one lost one leg. They fought. Amen. If you need to come this morning, you come.